All right. Let's get rolling. Season 2, Episode 1. Welcome to Episode 2.1. This is called Freakonomics Radio Podcast, The Hidden Side of the Art Market. This episode is about art, or more specifically, that world and the market which perpetuates art. All of my podcasts are intentionally short because I get bored listening to hour-long podcasts, and the scripts for each episode are published on my Patreon page prior to broadcasting, and the scripts are published on my Medium page following the broadcast. I want to circle back to the Freakonomics Radio podcast episodes 484, 485, and 486, the three-part series that I mentioned last time, and also talk about the state of the arts. I'll talk more in depth about this after this short break. We're back again. The Freakonomics Radio podcast three-part episodes about the hidden side of the art market covered a lot of territory, and a statement made on the broadcast compared the art market to the diamond market. As many will admit, the diamond market is a very tightly controlled market by a very small group of individuals who control the mining, cutting, categorizing, and ultimately the pricing of the international diamond industry. Episode 1 of the Freakonomics podcast covers the nature of the art market, but also the major players. The international art market functions in similar fashion to the diamond market, where a very small group of individuals tightly control the available product from selected artists to even more selected collectors, as well as the pricing of these works of art. These individuals are skilled marketing specialists who are wizards, male and female, that speak a language about the arts which keeps their world veiled in mystery. This world is known as the primary market. Conversations they had with Glenn Lowry, the director of the Museum of Modern Art, and Amy Capalazzo of Sotheby's are particularly interesting. These wizards also control who is able to acquire artworks, so the muggles of the world cannot simply walk into one of their art galleries and make a purchase. We not only have to have enough money, we also have to be members of the club. Episode 2 covers the perspective of the artists. There are many, many artists alive in the world today, myself included so far, who are driven to create. Most of the artists being represented by the wizards are dead, but there are a select few artists who are living and who are able to enjoy the benefits of being included. The rest of us are known as outsiders and cover a broad spe spectrum of fame and reputation. I enjoyed episode two especially hearing the artists talk about what they like and don't like and think of as fair play from the perspective of how they are being compensated as the creators of the art. Artists in the music industry and the film industry have the benefit of being compensated in perpetuity in the form of, ro form of royalties. But the visual and performing arts have yet to realize this level of compensation. Perhaps in the form of NFTs, this imbalance may be corrected. Episode 3 talks about how art became elite, the disruptors in the art world, and how the art world is being impacted in the digital age. The history history of the evolution of the art market and the embrace from the elites is really entertaining and the segue into modern digital age and the methods employed by those attempting to disrupt the control of the art market is very thoughtful. One aspect of modern times wasn't discussed, and that is how the COVID pandemic has crushed the art galleries as many have permanently closed. Museums are in the learning phase of how to reopen and do so safely. I often say that the digital slash info slash tech industries are just now developing the tools that modern artists are able to use in their creative process on a global scale. 
i.e. NFTs. We'll see how that all works out. But that's a good idea that NFTs have about being able to pay royalties to other artists. I, for one, think it's a great idea. When I am asked about what art should art lovers buy, I typically tell them to buy art which makes them feel something. Any feeling of discomfort or aesthetically pleasing. Art is supposed to make us feel. The future of the art market is going to be fun to watch. If you follow me on any of my social media, there are links below. Um, I'll publish these on my Patreon page and my Medium page, so feel free to follow me on Patreon, my podcast, Medium, my art store, Facebook, Instagram, or on Amazon where you can buy early poems by myself, which are now available in hardback. hardback. Uh, thank you all to all my art dudes and art dudettes. Peace and love.